Heartland series. It's a good two-legged dog story. Their service and sacrifice. Thanks for watching, and have a good night. And finally, Knoxville's history includes nicknames like the Marble City, Scruffy City, and so on. 10 News reporter Jim Matheny examines another nickname in the drawers of history that made Knoxville the underwear capital of the world. It was incredible the number of things Knoxville made for the whole nation. Reflect on the vacant mill just beside downtown Knoxville. And historian Jack Neely can spin a yarn about the past, where for more than a century, Textiles told the tale of the city's economy. At one time, there were 13 textile mills in Knoxville. It was enormous. We're looking at the old standard knitting mill. This is actually a later addition to a uh, knitting mill, which has been here since about 1900 or so. It was the single biggest employer in Knoxville at one time. 3,500 people worked here. Claimed to be the biggest textile manufacturing plant in America. For standard knitting and many other mills in town, the long and short of it was underwear. Yeah, well, Knoxville was the underwear capital, and it was because of all the uh, underwear manufactured. They made mainly undergarments, uh, T-shirts, uh, underwear, long johns, union suits, they called them in those days, socks, three different hosiery mills at one time. They made, I think, 43 million garments a year, just some incredible number. Knoxville had the workforce and the railroads to stitch and ship the latest styles across the country. In the 1930s, that included the latest bombshell design of jockey shorts that could make every man resemble the brawny Tarzan. While that's some bold embroidery on the benefits of briefs, it's no fabrication to say Knoxville Mills truly supported the troops. They ramp up production during wars, especially during World War II. Knoxville plants landed huge government contracts to cover the military by weaving thermal underwear for warmth. And millions of white cotton t-shirts and boxer shorts, especially appreciated by those trying to keep cool in the South Pacific. The physical depression of the tropics. This air crew member recommends t-shirts under the regulation shirt or as outer garments by themselves. It's likely that anybody that was in the World War II was wearing something manufactured in Knoxville. Now, after the war, some of the mills here in Knoxville kept cranking out products for the military, but by the mid-1950s, many of the mills here were just hanging on by a thread. And some of the biggest operations, including Appalachian Mills, which was located right here on 17th Street, had to shut down in 1956. Yeah, Knoxville actually lost 10% of its population in the 1950s. While most of the mills unraveled, Standard Knitting Mills saw success by stitching one of the nation's most popular brands. The health knit brand, which you saw all over the country, was all manufactured right here. Sales for Standard soar during an era when men could double their comfort with cigarettes and health knit tidy whities Then the brand threaded its way into a new market of colorful expression in the 1960s and 70s. We forget the t-shirts were just underwear for a long time. They were all white until about the late 1960s, and you started seeing uh, pictures on t-shirts. And uh, a lot of the cool new t-shirts with like Keep On Trucking and Mickey Mouse and all these things the hippies were wearing, they made those here. There's a hip side to uh, underwear manufacturing. While most industries are forced to lay off workers, Standard has been lucky. But even a behemoth like Standard Knitting Mill could not avoid the seismic shift unfolding overseas. After a series of layoffs in the mid-1980s, new ownership took over the mill in 1988. Standard Knitting Mills sold out to Delta Apparel. Workers were hoping Delta would save their jobs. It only took a few months for Delta to go from talking about new expansions in Knoxville to hanging hundreds of employees out to dry. These employees were told just this morning that in 60 days they would be out of work. It's reprehensible the way this company has behaved. I think it stinks. Uh, we spent and raised our kids in this mill. That's the saddest part. Leaving all your friends behind. Workers at the old Standard Knitting Mill sewed their last stitches on August 11th, 1989. Since then, many of the other old mills in town have become home to new businesses. But Standard has struggled to find suitors for this sprawling space, a place that still offers a reflection of the past. When mills intertwined to support the nation, and made Knoxville 
the underwear capital of the world. Yeah, and, and that might be funny to anybody that doesn't wear underwear, but, uh, but I, everybody who does wear underwear, it's, it's an important item. In Knoxville, Jim Matheny, WBIR 10 News. We'll leave the boxer a brief discussion to you and yours. <laughs> Knoxville may have another claim to fame in the history of underwear. Yeah, the website for Bike Athletics says the very first jock straps were made in Knoxville back in 1874. They were made to protect people riding bicycles on cobblestone streets. Who knew? <laughs> yeah, for what it's worth, Jack Neely says he is still looking through old articles to ensure that fable is true. <laughs> We learned so much about Knoxville through Jim Athene and Jack do. Neely, and that's going to do it for us. Thanks so much for watching.